All right, everybody, and welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Now, there's been a few of you guys over the past probably six months or so that have asked me to do a State of the Collection video. And while I want to do that, uh, I simply don't know how to do it. There are so many watches currently in the collection. Uh, I don't sell any. I've never sold a watch. So everything you see on the channel, unless it's something that I have to return to the manufacturer, uh, is uh, still in my collection. So that's a lot of watches, guys. And it'd probably take, you know, a good three hour video or something. So maybe down the road or something, I'll do, uh, you know, maybe in a, in a few parts and you guys can kind of see. But what I wanted to do today is just uh, my top 10 watches uh, that I wear the most because you can see uh, that we do get a lot of watches in on these uh, channels. And it is kind of interesting to probably see what we wear on an everyday basis because certainly we don't wear everything that comes into the channel, uh, you know, all day, every day. Uh, so I wanted to share with you my top 10 that are in my rotation that I wear on a daily basis. And here is watch number one. This is, of course, the Seiko Arnie. I mean, what can you say about this watch uh, that really hasn't already been said? This is my workout watch. I use it when I run, which is pretty much every day now. Of course, the air conditioner went out of my house, so I really don't feel like running uh, now. That's why you don't hear it in the background. Um, so yeah, I use this for running. Um, it's not like the best workout watch that you could find, but uh, basically what I do is when I arrive to the place and I begin working out or running or walking, I'll go ahead and set this... Uh, bezel to and it's hard to turn with these gloves i'll set it to the uh the minute the time that i arrived and then i use the stopwatch function uh to uh time my runs so i kind of got a dual time thing going there the only thing that i don't like about it when you're running is that you have to unscrew uh this pusher here uh, to start the chronograph and then, uh, you know, you really, you start running and then you kind of screw it back down. You probably don't have to screw it back down, but, uh, you know, I just do just for water resistance issues. And uh, this thing's a tank. It's solar. I don't mind getting it wet. I run in the rain, everything like that. Great rubber strap. You can see it is quite dirty. So, you know, I'm not lying uh, when I say that I'm actually doing activity in it, working on cars all things like that. So the second watch that I wear on a daily basis, yes, of course, is the SKX-013. Um, these are out of production. If you can snag one, they are quite expensive, probably about 100 or almost $200 over premium right now. So it's a good investment, a good buy. This is a bracelet that is uh, an Islander bracelet uh, for one of the Islanders. 38 millimeter watches. I threw it on this. Love it on there. Three link. Very nice. Um, it's nice having an SKX that's smaller at 38 millimeters. I love the original SKX 007, but man, I'm kind of into small watches and 38 mil is my sweet spot. I wear this quite regularly. Watch number three. Again, no surprise here. It's the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic. Uh, a watch that took me a long time to fall in love with, but I absolutely do. Uh, I love the dial. I think it's one of the best dials uh, out there at this price, without a doubt. I love that second hand with the red tip. Really, really great. Uh, Push-pull crown, 100 meters of water resistance. I actually threw this on a uh, <laughs> aftermarket Rolex bracelet. Okay, a fake Rolex bracelet that was... Uh, I'm, it was off a replica watch that someone was selling on, you know, they were just selling the bracelet. So I was like, I'm going to get the bracelet, you know, because I was going to actually remove this crown here. And I tried with pliers. So if you guys know how I can remove that without damaging anything, that'd be awesome because I don't want to wear anything that's not uh, genuine. But this really just fits this watch perfectly. And, uh, you know, Swiss, Swiss, you know, uh, it is what it is. Watch numero 40 is uh, the Steel Dive 1970. Yes, it is for my money. Gosh, it is dirty too. So you know I wear this. Yeah, you know I'm not lying, guys. I didn't polish these up. I probably should have. Make them look good. Steel Dive 1970, 150 bucks, 200 meters of water resistance. It is excellent, excellent. The loom is outstanding on this. Uh, this is... Uh, the original end links, uh, they're female end links, and I, I found a bracelet. This is off the um, 
My goodness, the Paul Newman uh, Daytona homage. I took it off that, put it on here, and then this clasp uh, came with one of uh, the uh, watches I was modding, uh, one of the bracelets I was modding. So I just threw it on there. It gives a nice little vintagey vibe. All in all, guys, if you have not picked up the Steel Dive 1970, you've got to. On to the next. No surprise here. This is actually my most worn watch in my collection currently. This is just a mod of a, you know... I guess a mill sub, I guess you could say, just an homage to it. Um, I've got it on this great uh, crown and buckle uh, little connery strap, I think is really awesome. Uh, the modder on this just was absolutely outstanding. Uh, much better job than I did on mine, So, but uh, I love it. I love the, uh, the drilled uh, uh, lug holes so I can change it out with a bracelet easily. Wonderful ghosted bezel. Every time I post this on Instagram, it seems like people love it. I love it. And it is the most worn watch in my collection currently. And so sticking with the vintage theme, this is the Laurier Neptune Gen 3. You guys know I love this watch. I almost thought I would quit because it was like the perfect watch. Uh, I still think it is pretty, pretty darn perfect there. It's just about everything that I like. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance, an acrylic domed crystal, just absolutely beautiful. Drilled lugs, wonderful case, very uh, Omega style, vintage Omega style. And a vintage Omega style bezel that I think is uh, excellent. It did win my first annual Bezel crank off, so... Check that video out if you have not. Wonderful big crown. Uh, and of course, the bracelet is one of the best bracelets you're going to get at this price. Without a doubt, I absolutely adore this watch. This will never leave my collection, and I wear it a lot. And the next watch is the subject of my previous video. Of course, this is the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical uh, on the bracelet, which I think, uh, for me, added a lot of value uh, to it. And again, the bracelet is a little little uh, vintage style feeling, uh, just a press metal clasp, but uh, yeah, hand wind. I love hand wind watches. I think it's wonderful that you can uh, wind a watch up in the morning, and uh, of course I don't wind this every morning because it has an 80 hour power reserve, so it lasts about almost four days, really. Uh, I think you get a little, a little bit over 80 hours, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, love connecting with a watch in that way. Uh, this is a strap monster. It looks good on straps. It looks good on the bracelet. Pretty much anything you throw at it. The simplistic military dial is amazing. 24-hour Arabic numerals, so you can always have your military time. All in all, guys, if you have not picked this watch up, you are missing out. Second to last offering here today, I think that's right, unless I have miscounted, is the Heimdaller C Shepard. I love this watch. I love the green color. I think it's fantastic. I think I picked this up uh, a year or two ago at, uh, about, I think it was $179. So really affordable. 200 meters of water resistance. It's an homage to the uh, Seiko Tuna. I think it looks fantastic. And uh, the cool thing is, is I added uh, it to a Seiko rubber bracelet that came with my Samurai. I'm not a big fan of the Samurai on a rubber strap. So I put it on this and this rubber strap is one of the most, if not the most comfortable rubber straps I have ever encountered. If you can get your hands on one of these, do it. 22 mil lugs. It is just absolutely outstanding. You also have drilled lugs, so strap changes super, super easy. Gosh, man, it's just a beautiful watch, very vibrant, and it adds a lot of color to my daily wear. And the final watch, drum roll, please, everybody. Put your hands on the table, Brrr, drum roll. Of course, it's the Omega Seamaster 300M. This is from 1999, the Pierce Brosnan Bond watch now uh you know um this is a grail for me this was like the one watch that i thought i could uh, have and be happy and um it is not um i do like it i do wear it on a daily basis the bezel's a little jacked up so i need to get that addressed as i've mentioned numerous times on the channel um it it is beautiful um but it's from a different era um it's a really great watch I thought it was great when I was 15 years old and I saw it um, and I wanted it and it, that kind of never died down over the years. And when I finally got it, I was like, wow, you know, 
I was 15 when I decided I liked this thing, so, but I still like it. I still enjoy it. I uh, had an extra link put in uh, recently at the Omega store because I gained a bit of weight, which I'm trying to get off, and it's working pretty well. Perhaps I will appear on camera sometime soon. So, yeah, guys, that's the 10 watches that I wear the most. Um, my grab and goes, uh, pfft. I think it's a good little collection there. And of course, they rotate. You know what? I messed up. This is watch nine. This is the ninth watch. I forgot one. Let me get it. Well, for those of you that just shut the video off too bad, you who are sticking around to get this, this is the latest uh, watch mod that I've done. I took the dial and the hands and stuff out of the gold uh, Invicta Pro Diver because that just ended up being very gaudy and I really did not like the case and it with the bracelet, it was just too much. So I got this different case and I think it looks fantastic. I left the gold hands even though there's not really any guilt on uh, any other part of the dial, but yeah, I, I think it's great. Kind of a Tudor-esque uh, look to it. Um, yeah, but this is, uh, in my rotation currently, uh, I kind of rotated out with the, you know, the other mod that I did, but, uh, yeah, so, yep, that's the, uh, 10 watches that I wear the most, so let me know in the comments, guys, what you think, if you think it's a good rotation, what should, uh, be missing, what did I miss that I've shown you in the past that I should be wearing, please let me know, and I will see you next time.